I know crimes. I can smell them. You don't have to smell this one. I can prove it to you 18 different ways. I can prove to you that he won. Remember that moment after the 2020 election? Ooh, well, Rudy, it turns out the special counsel, Jack Smith, may know a thing or two about crimes as well. As new reporting from the Washington Post late today says, Smith's probe into Donald Trump has begun honing in on the twice-impeached former president's circle of attorneys. The Post writes, federal prosecutors investigating efforts to overturn the 2020 election have asked witnesses extensive questions about the actions of Rudy Giuliani, including where he got his information about alleged fraud, what he did in the days around January 6th, 2021, and what he knew about the actions coming that day. People who have appeared in front of the grand jury say investigators looking into classified documents taken to Mar-a-Lago have sought to force testimony from another Trump lawyer, Evan Corcoran, by saying there is evidence that the former president used the attorney's legal services in furtherance of a crime. And prosecutors have repeatedly sought information on the actions of yet another Trump lawyer, Boris Epstein, in connection with both classified documents and Trump's false elector scheme. They have quizzed multiple Trump attorneys involved with the documents case, including Christina Bob, Alina Haba, and Jesse Binal, according to the people familiar with the investigation. All just another sign that the special counsel is, in fact, picking up the pace of its investigation, especially as the 2024 presidential election starts to take shape. And joining me now is Andrew Weissman, MSNBC legal analyst, former FBI general counsel, and former senior member of the Mueller probe. Andrew, it's always great to talk to you. I want to zero in on the second person I talked about, Evan Corcoran. Just reading this Washington Post piece, not, I'm a non-lawyer, I'm just coming, you know, my, my stipulation here, but he seems to be the person that seems to be in particular an interesting peril because he's the one who signed off on the attestation that Trump, with his lawyer's help, had given all the classified documents back. And that turned out to be so untrue that they had to do an FBI search. It, 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 the, is the fact that he's being questioned about this mean that he can't throw up attorney-client privilege and say, well, whatever we talked about regarding the documents is privileged? So um, to remind people, there, there are two lawyers who were involved in that attestation, at least two that we know of. Christina Bob actually signs the attestation, right. but she mm -hmm. has said that she got her information and it was drafted by Mr. Corcoran. So he drafts it, but she signs it, which by the way, Joy, I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know why on God's green earth didn't he sign it. Um, so right. can you say fall guy? I mean, it's basically, <laughs> let's get her to sign it. So the issue for um, the uh, prosecutors is who gave that information to Mr. Corcoran? Um, so, you know, presumably at some point you get to Donald Trump. Um, and this is why lawyers can be so important in this investigation, whether it's the January 6th part or the Mar-a-Lago part, which is if you are asking your lawyers to commit a crime, um, right. like such as saying something that's not true to the government, that's a crime, making a false statement, obstructing the government. If you do that, lawyers then can be asked to testify. Normally, there's an attorney-client privilege. If you are my client, Joy, you and I can talk and nobody gets to know about it. But, you know, if you were to ask me or I were to ask you to commit a crime, all bets are yeah. off. I mean, obviously, that's a gross hypothetical. Um, <laughs> but that's what it, you know, happens here is that if Donald Trump was basically saying to Mr. Corkman, just tell them X, and that X yeah. is false, meaning I returned yeah. everything, Jack Smith gets to say to Mr. Corkman, where did he get that information from? And the courts are going to say, absolutely, he has to testify. So Jack Smith is following a very standard playbook here. Just to be clear, this is nothing unusual. It's nothing yeah. sort of outlandish or aggressive. It is, the, it is exactly what you do. We did it in the Mueller investigation. Um, and you, he follows, you know, essentially, you follow all the evidence as far as it could go. And if it takes you to the very top, you know, that's going to be... a, a pretty much a gold mine because he will have a lawyer who gets to take the stand and say, the information that I got in this certification that we know is false, I got from my client, from the lawyer. Donald Trump. Yeah, so from that, the client, yeah. right. So that's really devastating. Yep. I, it, and also, so, if I you can I made that go clear. to... <laughs> 
<laughs> no, you did. And I, it's too bad you, it's, it's probably a good thing for Christina Bob that you can't go to jail for being stupid because what lawyer signs something that yes. they don't know is true? Like, you're a lawyer. Like, that's actually supposed to be like lawyer 101. Like, they should teach that in like the first year of law school. Don't sign that. You don't know it's true. Okay, let, let, let's go to January 6th yeah. because this has been the, the one that you have said, and I think you've been really good about being like, this is the most difficult one. It's very complicated. Boris Epstein is involved in this one. You know, I, I think right now about um, the attempts being made to talk about the weaponization of government, right, in this sham committee that's going on in the House. But the weaponization yep. of government, to me, you can boil it down to what was happening at the DOJ when Trump was in charge, right? After his attorney general says, no, it's BS, there's nothing wrong with this election, they try to install a different attorney general, so that he will say, oh, no, there's something wrong with this election. They have false electors they're trying to put forward. They're trying to use governmental offices and power to keep him in office. Like, this seems to be, it should be the biggest one. Um, and Boris Epstein is in the middle of that one. Can you explain why, despite what seems to be the, 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 the worst one, why that one is the most complicated? Yeah. So, by the way, I couldn't agree with you more. The, the hypocrisy of having a committee that's looking at the what's supposed to be the, quote, current weaponization of DOJ. When we came from the Bill Barr DOJ, where, as you said, they were trying to put Jeff Clark in to do Donald Trump's bidding. Bill Barr tried to get rid of the uh, Roger Stone case, the Michael Flynn case. I mean, it, it's just unbelievable that, you know, this is basically saying black is white, white is black. Um, <laughs> yeah. So January 6th, you know, what I would say about that is, it's not that it's so complicated, it's just bigger. Um, you know, we all sat through the January 6th committee hearings. It's not like this is rocket science. We can see what happened. It's bigger though, because there are so many different strands of the conspiracy. It wasn't just what happened on January 6th. You have the fake electors, you have what happened at DOJ, right. which you referred to. You have the pressure on Mike Pence. So there are just all these different pieces to it because it's not a conspiracy of just a few people and a small uh, time frame. So it's, but the actual crime, I mean, is there anyone who is watching this who doesn't understand exactly what happened? So, but it is a question right. of putting all of that together, making sure you have all of the witnesses, and especially because Donald Trump doesn't use email, you want to make sure right. you have as many people with direct access to him who say, this is what he knew. This is what yeah. I told him. This is what he said. Um, because in court, that's what you need to deal with, you know, these things, the rules of evidence, which is, requires that kind of proof. Um, but, and you know, it, and it we just even... watched a double... So we just don't watch the double murder case, and it That's was right. it was circumstantial evidence. And you watch that, yeah. and you sit there, and you look at the Mar-a-Lago case, and you think, okay, one of these cases is actually <laughs> much easier, and that's the yeah. Mar-a-Lago case. It's wild. I, I need you to come back, Andrew Weissman, because I do want to talk to you about this Dominion thing. I have so many questions about that, because that one also seems like a slam dunkish thing, but I don't know, because I'm not a lawyer, and you are a great one. So thank you, Andrew Weissman. Much appreciated. Uh